I am at uh, Podmore's Mill on the uh, <coughs> on the Calden Canal, and the reason that I'm here today is I'm going to be researching another tramway. Uh, well, actually, a whole network of them that existed, and they they terminated just here um, by the canal. And um, the way we get to them is through this gate. Now, you might quite sensibly think. Well, you know what, this doesn't really look like a, a tramway at all, and it isn't. But we are actually running, or walking along the route of the tramway. Because, crossing the railway line, there's the River Churnit itself. And the tramway in question crossed the River Churnit at the same place as this bridge, but on a much larger and higher structure. And I've got a picture of it. So... So, that's the wooden bridge that once spanned the river. There's a far better picture of it. And it, it spanned the river more or less there. So it's not quite on the spot that our bridge is on. But as you can see from our bridge, it was much higher. So it, it, it came from the level there above the railway, the, the level of the canal that I've just come from, and crossed over, and it was much longer, and it went to just over there. So let, let's have a look what happened uh, when it got to the land again. Right, it was very close to this spot, perhaps a bit lower down, maybe just down there, that the, the bridge actually touched base again with the land. And the reason that this spot's important is because up here, and it's very very difficult to tell where it could be following this line there or it could actually be more along here where the uh, footpath goes but I don't think so because that looks way too steep I'm pretty certain it's this one there was once a very short tramway uh, leading to some mine workings as you can see it's pretty impassable now I did actually try and walk it a few years ago uh, and went about 100 meters or so and then got stuck and I was a lot more uh, a lot more able-bodied then than I am now, but that one so was the Raven Rocks Tram Road, and like I say, not very long at all, and it, it went to some small mine workings. Um, I think one of them was called Hazelwood Mine. However, what interests me far more is um, <clears throat> a different tramway that I believe exists, and that is not mentioned in the book. Um, the Churnit Valley Eye and the Mills, the M Mills and Mines, um, which is the book that I got the information about the bridge from, and also the <coughs> the book that talks about the Ravens Wood Tram Road. But going through here, um, <coughs> a totally different, but in my opinion, far more interesting tram road. And like I say, I've not seen anything recorded about this, and that tram road is here at this spot. And I am certain it existed. Now, we have this very interesting looking hole here that I'm sure was to do with some kind of industry. It looks, particularly by the fact it's fenced, that this was a mine shaft at one time. There were workings all around here. But more interesting is this. And in my opinion, this is undoubtedly an inclined plane. Now, as with the intake pit tram road, there were lots and lots of inclined planes on the early tramways, and um, <clears throat> particularly at the Churnit Valley, because what you would do is you'd have workings at the top of the valley, and then the plane would take the loaded trucks up and down towards the, uh, towards the bottom of the valley where the canal ran, which would take take the goods away. Now, <clears throat> inclined planes, by their very nature, have to be pretty straight, and you might be uh, confused into thinking this one isn't. But actually, it's a lot straighter than it thinks, and this, than you might think. And this staircase, although it looks like it's winding, if you look at the actual earthworks beneath all the vegetation, the earthworks are pretty damn straight. <laughs> And the best 
view is here. As you can see, that is actually pretty straight, even though the staircase waves a lot. Jesus, I wish I was fitter than I am. Right. Right, so I'm now at the top of the incline and I've recovered my breath a little bit and I've got a little confession to make. I told you a lie. There is stuff written about this tramway, but it was in a totally different section than I expected. And it's <coughs> it's here. And this is called Kingsley Banks, this area is. Um, <coughs> so there's the tramway leading off. But the reason I've stopped at this spot and probably, well, I think this would probably be the best place to actually hold where there are some bricks embedded in the, in the pathway is because <coughs> it says in Churnit Valley Iron the workings at Kingsley were extended after there were sufficient adits on the rock level to the top of Kingsley Banks and Far Banks. Bowers decided against level working in this area and shafts were to be sunk far back on the rough ground making no spoil on good farming land. The first shaft was sunk high above the building below used as a Weybridge and office. A series of shafts were sunk around the upper reaches of the far banks and were called by their numbers 1 to 5. They were eventually linked by a tramway to carry the stone, still a good maroon colour, high up in the banks until between numbers 3 and 2 a steep incline carried it down by using a large drum, known locally as Kingy's Drum, to the weighing house, now generally called the Machine. Um, here it was joined by the stone from the lower tramway under Raven Rocks. The track of this long tramway, which worked until 1878, can easily be followed around the top of the banks and down the incline from Kingy's Drum to the machine. Um, <clears throat> a number of bricks left from the warehouse can still be found on the spot below the last elbow in the main path. So that's these here. And uh, so this is the remains of the warehouse. Um, <clears throat> The stone, having been checked and weighed, was chammed over the long wooden bridge built to cross both the river and railway and to enable the trucks to be tipped into the boats in the canal basin just 40 yards west of the Flint Mills. The bridge carried a double set of lines and was 85 years, five yards long. It appeared to deal adequately with the transportation over the valley of a very large amount of stone over a period of more than 30 years. So, here in this way bridge, there was the drum, which was the, the machine that oh, Kingy's drum, which is the machine that pulled the incline up and down. And <clears throat> at the bottom was the thing called the machine, um, which was where the two tramways met. That could be where that uh, large fenced off hole was. Whatever the case, I'm now walking along the Kingsley Banks tram road. And I have to say, this is a glorious tram road to walk because it's really easy to follow. It's all the public footpath now. And um, some of the views from it are absolutely incredible. I mean, the problem is the, the vegetation's so high, but have a look at that. Absolutely gorgeous there, all, all the way across the valley to Consul Forge. But this is the, the Kingsley Banks tram road. Because it's so late, and you know, the, it was mentioned 1878 there, this was not the kind of tram road that would have used stone blocks and iron rails. It was probably more like what we would call a railway with wooden sleepers and um, <coughs> rails that we recognise as rails rather than the plates. Um, 
whether it ever used steam locomotion, that is not recorded. So I very much doubt it did. So it would have been horse drawn, apart from the incline. But aside from that, it was pretty much what we would call a narrow gauge railway. The Kingsley Manx Chamber. Obviously this section um, is not quite as it was um, and I do wonder if the actual original tramway was running alongside on that slightly higher embankment before meeting what is now the path. That would kind of make sense because that embankment's dropping down now. It's almost the same level. Yes, yeah, so that embankment now is the same level as the path, so I think we're probably back on the track bed now. And in this bit it is quite clear to see how this tramway was engineered in that it clings to the side of the hill, wrapping itself in and out. And of course it had to, um, because otherwise it's all straight up or down. Um, <clears throat> but also, that's where the workings were, so it was there to stay close to um, workings of ironstone or coal, and that's what it did. It talked about the views. Look at that. Of course, back in those days, whether it would have been quite such a glorious view is another match entirely. Um, a lot of the hillsides would have been scarred by industry. Um, various mines, both iron and coal, and um, <coughs> because there would have been smoke. Even so, I don't think driving horses along here would be that bad a job at all. This section, really, the, the engineering is quite clear. It's also clear as to how narrow the track bed would have been.
so far I'm, as I am aware, uh, no relics from this track uh, bed have ever been found. No rails or sleepers. Um, but there are, <coughs> within the visitor centre at the country park, a console country park, there are a variety of plates and rails and tracks that have been found from tramways in this area. So some of them could have come from this one. Uh, but unfortunately they're all just collected there and no details have, have been collected as to where exactly they were found, when, by whom, anything. It, it's just a collection of various bits and pieces that people have put together in a display. Still better than that than rusting away I suppose. And now, we reach the end of the line. Of course it isn't the end of the line. You can see the line going on there, but you can also see how it's impassable. Um, the footpath is part of the network of footpaths that have been um, developed as part of the country park. Um, and they lead towards the, uh, the visitor centre, basically. Um, <clears throat> but that's as far as we're going today. It goes on for a while, up to some workings in that direction. Like I say, we can't follow it, but I think this has given us insight enough into this beautiful little forgotten tramway along Kingsley Banks.